Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Going into round eight of the Olympiad in Chennai, Armenia held a slender lead over the rest. Armenia had 13 match points. Then there's a bunch of teams on 12. Those top pairings, Armenia played against India. USA played against India too. And I'm going to be taking a look at a game from that match. So Fabiano Caruana played against Domaraju Gukesh. So these players had had differing fortunes so far in the event. Caruana struggling. But Gukesh on seven out of seven. So this was going to be his sternest challenge yet. How would the young Indian star, remember he's just 16 years old, how would he fare against Fabiano Caruana, one of the strongest players in the world? Caruana with white. It's a Rossellimo, an opening that Caruana has such experience in. G6 from Gukesh. Of course, it's one of the main lines. Um, it's not the mover that I'm going to be recommending in my anti-Sicilians course, which I'm working on at the moment. But g6, of course, a very respectable move. And here, c3 is currently quite trendy at the moment. That's the old move. That's how I always used to play it with white. But Caruana decides to exchange on c6, which is also very respectable. Now, the most solid move here is just to recapture with the d-pawn, which frees the bishop on c8, can potentially come here. But Gukesh selects b takes c6, which is strategically far more complex. And that's a very brave decision against Caruana, who famously enjoys complex positions. So rookie one. Things about this line with black, you have to be very careful of pawn structure. So for example, if black plays d6 here, then e5 will break up black's pawns. And if white achieves this kind of position, then these pawns are desperately weak. So black has to be very careful of that. So that's the point of queen c7. That's just covering some important squares here and, and not committing any pawns yet in the position. Might play d6, might play e5. I should add, if e5 in this position, of course, white is going to play with c3 and d4 very quickly. That's, well, more than fine for white. So anyway, queen c7, very subtle move. h3, that's also a kind of waiting move, actually. Just seeing how black commits. And now d6. And e5. Well... C3 is a very respectable move, very respectable alternative here. That's uh, being played by some very decent players. Um, that takes the, the game down different paths. E5 is far more direct, looking to break up black's pawns, uh, as I mentioned before. So a temporary pawn sacrifice. Pawn takes pawn. And now D3. So we can see the point of that pawn move H3 stops bishop g4, which could be a bit of an annoying pin, considering that white wants to maintain some pressure here. But you can see with this pawn move e5 that it's now weakened these pawns, in particular that pawn c5, which is a target for white's pieces. So for example, you know this knight could hop out here to target c5 and don't forget that bishop as well, which might come to e3 to take here. And if a piece reaches here, capturing a pawn, then that's very nice indeed. That's an important square. And black also has to think, well, you know, how how do you get these pieces out? How do you bring the, 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 the king's knight into play? If it comes to f6, of course, white plays knight takes e5. So this is an intriguing pawn sacrifice from white. Um, it's not unusual in these kind of Rossellimo positions. And Gukesh plays c4, 
after a little think, and again, this is a very typical reaction. If pawn takes pawn, then the coast is clear for f5, followed by e4. And certainly the, the e-pawn turns into a huge asset in that kind of position. So c4, very interesting, getting rid of that weakened pawn. Knight c3, played very quickly by Caruana. Pawn takes, pawn takes, so, well, by virtue of this pawn push, uh, Gukesh has succeeded in, in isolating that d-pawn. But again, the question is, how do you bring out that king's knight? If, if f6 which feels very slow, blocks in the bishop, then white breaks with d4, and that, well, white's pieces look tremendous there. It could well be difficult to bring the king to safety once the, the queen reaches c4, for example. So knight h6 from Gukesh. And knight takes e5, of course, if bishop takes, then bishop takes h6. Knight f5. Knight comes into play, bishop f4. So material is now even. And watch out for this discovered attack. So the queen just nudges to the side, queen b7. And knight a4, again, so typical of this kind of position where that weak c5 square is certainly a destination for that knight on a4. f6 pushes the knight back to f3. Now e5 premature because of d4, because of this pin. So, of course, black brings the king to safety before thinking about anything else. But now Caruana has time to play d4, which stops black breaking with e5. So I think Caruana must have been pretty pleased with the outcome of the opening, because he's well developed. Black's pieces don't look terribly well placed. You can see the bishop on g7 is blocked in by the pawn on f6. Bishop on c8 hasn't got a sort of natural diagonal to go to. There's a backward e-pawn. Um, possibilities to plonk a knight on c5. White is definitely better here. But I thought Gukesh's next move is very interesting, very brave. Well, indeed, his next two moves. He, After, well, a big think here, he realised that he could be in huge trouble here. Gukesh thought for well, 26 minutes, and play g5. Pushing the bishop back to h2, and then played h5. Well, this is extraordinary. I mean, talk about the confidence of youth. Um, no passive defending. He wants to introduce the idea, potentially, of g4, displacing the knight, and potentially attacking the d-pawn. I mean, this is brave, though, because it could mean that later on black's king is exposed. Very interesting. Um, if we just go back and move, after g5, Caruana kind of played it safe with bishop h2. He could have played knight c5 here. It's a really interesting idea. And the point is this. After queen takes b2, Get this, bishop c7, what a move. That bishop controls these squares, preventing the rooks coming into play, controlling b8 and d8, also controlling b6, preventing the queen coming back, and suddenly that queen is in big trouble. Um, I mean, it can, it can step out, but then queen c2... Queen might step up here. There's also potentially later on a g4 to get rid of this knight and take here. I mean, it's incredible. This bishop really paralyzes black's major pieces. What an incredible idea. Um, and it's the same after knight c5, queen b4, bishop c7. Again, controlling so many key squares here. That's that's uh, a starfish bish again. Um, or an archbishop. Really love that idea. 
Of course, it's a computer idea, but listen, I I'm, had to show you that one. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely thought, lovely concept. Anyway, Caruana played the normal move, bishop h2, and that preserves his advantage. Um, you know, you don't look for extraordinary moves when you can play very simply. Rook e4, very sensible, just preventing g4 and perhaps preparing to double on the e-file. I mean, this is a very pleasant position for white to play. Rook f7, very interesting. Split rooks, don't like it. Doesn't look good. But, you know, if this is the one weak point, well, it's not the only weak point in black's position, but it's, of course it's an important pawn. And the rook does protect it solidly. It also closes that diagonal too, which is tactically um, sensitive. Rook e1. Again, Caruana just bring pieces into play very nicely. Bishop f8 looks so passive, but sometimes you just have to play like this. Queen e2. Wow. I mean, it looks terribly impressive, but actually black defending okay here. Queen d5. This is the one little bit of hope that black has, that this queen op operating on a light square, remember that light squared bishop has been exchanged off, so the queen finds a decent square in the middle of the board, just gives black a little bit of hope. Of course, knight c3 drives the queen back again. I mean, in a way, it's a kind of... It's almost like a draw offer, really. If the knight comes back, well, this stage, I think Gukesh would be very happy to make a draw. And queen c4 looks really nice. Nice pin. Looks at this pawn here. Looks good. Queen b7. That queen shuffling round. Bishop covering these squares. And here, well, Caruana plays b4. Now, maybe it, it looks very impressive, but perhaps this overestimates his position because it gives black a little bit of hope. Looks sensible just to play knight a4 here, bringing the knight back. I know this knight has done a lot of shuffling between c3 and a4, but... You know, it can always come back again, but it also it now has the option to come into c, c5 and potentially into e6 as well. Also covers b2. But b4 played, and in fact it's possible to strike out straight away with a5 in this position. But first Gukesh goes for e6. So the bishop covers the e6 pawn, but that bishop comes into play. Not only that, this rook now has more freedom as well along the 7th rank. So b4 is attacked, so rook b1, and the queen just comes to d7. Caruana's problem here is that if the position ever opens, imagine if these two pawns are exchanged, then the light squared bishop comes into play. That's an issue. The rook comes back to e1, looking at the e-pawn, the queen back to b7, rook b1 and queen d7. So again, it's a tacit draw offer from Gukesh. He's very cramped here, and I think understandably, he would be happy with the draw. But Caruana wants to play on. Again, also very understandable. White just looks better in this position. a3, solid. Or is it? In fact, now Gukesh just sniffs a, sniffs a chance here. And a5 comes. It's a good move. If pawn takes, pawn rook takes. And now we can see, first of all, that pawn is attacked. And if it advances, and this light squared bishop has its day. Bishop d3. forking both rooks. So this is the danger, that that light squared bishop doesn't have an opponent and suddenly threatens to come into play. Knight a4. So knight b6 threat, queen d8. 
covering the b6 square. And again, if queen takes, that bishop has its say in the game. And this is problematic for white now, because of course this is now a threat. Pawn takes pawn, rook takes, knight c5. So the knight does reach c5, but by this stage, she doesn't achieve too much. Queen d5, that is a wonderful square for the queen. And if this is exchanged off, the rook goes back and g4, pushing the knight away, and then knight takes pawn. Finally, this the h and g pawns come good, and white's position collapses. It's very interesting that, yes, Caruana achieves getting the knight to c5, but by this stage, after queen d5, it's just not good enough. The queen drops back to e2. Rook takes a3. Well, Caruana is now a clear pawn down. And if knight takes, then rook takes f3, followed by knight takes d4, and black wins material. It's interesting to see how solid black is here. The rook and the bishop, which looked terribly passive earlier, actually defend the king beautifully here. So rook takes a3 just played, rook d1, defending the d-pawn, rook a7. Well, we did have split rooks earlier, and now they connect beautifully. And watch what happens if knight takes pawn in this position. Rook a1, and White is actually very weak on the back rank because the king's escape square is taken by the bishop. And this wins material because there's a threat to take here and here. So rook a7 just played. g4. Lashing out, hitting the knight. But I mean, really, by this stage, black's pawn up and it looks really good. Exchange of pawns, knight h6, bishop g3. I mean, it's just a difficult position for white. Well, once again, uh, knight takes pawn simply doesn't work because the knight is hanging on f3. Bishop g3 played. e5. So, I mean, basically, black is just breaking out here. Um, the g pawn is now attacked. And yes, this light squared bishop, once it comes into play, it really looks deadly. And and if pawn takes pawn, then of course that knight is hanging. Whoops. Well, you've got to watch out for that one. Let's so let's just clear that one up. Yeah, queen takes is better. <laughs> I won't take with the bishop, I'll take that way. Might even be better to play rook a1 first and then grab the knight. That's possible. No knight comes back instead. Okay. Better just to take the knight. <laughs> okay, let's come back here. So e5 just played. Knight takes pawn. So this is a desperate counterattack from Caruana, hoping to break through to Black's king. But actually, there are a lot of pieces around the king, and even the rook defends on the seventh as well. Bishop takes pawn. Good counter strike, of course. If rook takes, then bishop takes. And remember, Black is a piece up. Queen d2, queen f3, queen comes into play, hitting the rook. Rook g5 check, rook g7. So, as I said before, black has enough pieces around the king. Rook e1, bishop h3, threatening mate. Bishop moves, so that covers here. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes rook check, king takes queen g5. King h7. So now black is two pieces up. Knight e4. Last desperate try from Caruana. Wants to give a check here, but there is a refutation of this move. Can you spot it? I'll have a quick slurp of tea. What's the winning move for black? Queen takes knight. And here... Caruana resigned if rook takes queen. It's mate on the back rank. Let's just go right to the bitter end. Of course, these squares covered by the bishops. Wow, what a game. 
So Gukesh now has eight out of eight in the Olympiad. Sensational. And this victory um, contributed to India 2's victory over the United States 3-1. Really convincing. Uh, but such an impressive game. You know, if we just look at this position now to the opening, Caruana looks like he's in complete control. Moves like this, g5 and h5, that takes real guts to play. But after that, I thought Gukesh played with such patience. He didn't lash out. He waited for his moment. And when the moment came after b4, then he was ready to strike and struck later with this move a5. And then it was plain sailing, a brilliant counterattack from a 16-year-old star from India. Well, let's just have a quick recap on the scores. Now, on top board, Armenia defeated the Indian first team, two and a half, one and a half. So Armenia maintained their lead. India 2 defeated USA 3-1. On the third board, Uzbekistan defeated Germany by two and a half, one and a half. Uh, so that's significant. Uh, round nine pairings. We have Armenia on 15 points, play against Uzbekistan on 14. And India two on 14, play against Azerbaijan on 13. Wow. Wow. Uh, Incredible that Armenia are still out there in the lead. Remember, they have lost their star player, Levon Aronian, who now plays for the USA. Uh, so they're playing, they're having a, an amazing tournament. But isn't it extraordinary that India too have now leapt ahead of the Indian first team? Frankly, to me, no big surprise. They're chock full of the, the young young players um, like Prague, um, well, Gukesh, of course. Let's let's just get that the, the team up. There's Sarin as well. So we have Gukesh, Sarin, Prakinananda, Sadwani, and Adiban. Adiban is the old man of the team, but they're all performing incredibly well. Um, so it's going to be fascinating. Will the Indian second team actually win the Olympiad? There are three rounds left. Can Armenia keep their nose in front? fascinating stuff uh do join me for another video coming soon oh and by the way patrons don't worry your august videos are coming soon um i have been on holiday so i'm just catching up with all that be patient they will arrive in good time thanks for watching